Oh, thank you. It's uh, absolutely lovely to be here in Coventry this morning um, and to have the chance to speak to you all today. So my name is Michael Gallagher. I'm the Regional Energy Projects Manager for the Midlands Energy Hub. So for those of you who have not come across the Midlands Energy Hub yet, um, we are funded by BASE, the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. We're hosted by Nottingham City Council, who are the accountable body. But we're represented across the whole of the Midlands by the nine laps you can see on the screen behind me. Um, and on the Midlands Energy Hub board, each of those laps are represented. And uh, it gives us a really good opportunity to um, get a really positive oversight of what's happening across the Midlands as a whole. There's an awful lot of very positive activity occurring. And it's really great in our monthly board meetings to find out what's going on across the piece. And of course, there is, uh, as mentioned previously, um, an awful lot happening in Coventry as well. So it's absolutely great to be uh, here in such a hub of uh, positive activity today. In terms of our makeup, um, in each LEP area, we've got a project officer based. Um, and they're there working alongside the LEPs and local authorities in that region. As we've recruited the team, we've specifically uh, gone for a very mixed and diverse skill set. There's so much going on across the Midlands, we wanted to make sure that we had a team that could work across the piece on everything from EV through to energy from waste, district heating, um, solar PV, and yeah, a whole host of other technologies. So we've been really fortunate with the people we've been able to get on board and join in the team, and really positive progress has been made so far across the, the Midlands Energy Hub. Our main role is to support the Midlands LEP energy strategy. So each LEP area has produced an energy strategy, which again was funded by Bayes to produce. Um, for this area, um, being part of the West Midlands Combined Authority, one energy strategy was written for, for all three authorities in this area. And essentially, they're there to identify um, opportunities and challenges across power, heat and transport, which is obviously the key part of what today is about on the transport side, um, as well as setting out the carbon uh, emissions uh, trajectory and demands for um, the next 10 years, up to 2030. So the team are working really hard to provide that extra capacity, that extra technical knowledge to identify what projects we can deliver off the back of these energy strategies that have been produced. Because it's really important, and um, there was policy mentioned earlier, uh, it's now about putting that policy into action. We do not want these energy strategies gathering dust on a shelf. You know, the work's been done, now we have to deliver on the ambitions that are outlined in these energy strategies. So that's what the team are working on. What's well, also really important, and every time I have my meetings with Bayes on a monthly basis, is that these energy strategies are feeding into the local industrial strategies. Now, as I'm sure most of you are fully aware, the West Midlands Command Authority have launched their local industrial strategies. But for the other areas across the Midlands, and indeed um, across the other energy hubs in England, they're all trying to make the point that it's really important that energy is, is an important part of the local industrial uh, strategies that are being produced. So, what's so good about the Midlands Energy Hub approach? Um, there are five um, energy hubs in England. We're all set up slightly differently. But what works well is the fact that we've got that project officer present uh, in each LEP area. And they're located either in a LEP office or in a local authority office. Sometimes they hop between the two. And that gives uh, your local area um, just that local person who you can go to, who knows what's going on, what's happening on the ground, understands the local landscape, and can build the trust and relationships that are so important. From a regional level, as well as having the regional team get together every month for the meetings, um, we also have the Midlands Energy Hub Board, which is a great space for the leading LEPs and local authorities across the Midlands to come together and say what's happening in their areas and identi identify areas for collaboration. And this bit is absolutely key. We cannot tackle the challenges we're facing as individuals or even as individual organisations. We have to work together um, in, in order to, to meet the challenges ahead. And then nationally, I meet with the other Energy Hub leads um, every month with Bayes in London. And again, that's an opportunity for us to have the conversation at the national level, understand what's going on. And then the whole setup is really good for sending information from grassroots to a regional level up to a national level. 
so we can um, feed into Bayes what the challenges are on the ground, so what challenges businesses are having, what challenges local authorities are having. Key example being um, constraints on the grid and challenges connecting without uh, paying high costs. Uh, we fed that up to Bayes, Bayes got us in touch with the right person with the DNO at a senior level and then conversations were ongoing to try and unlock some of those barriers. That's just one simple explanation. But also it's really, really good that we can, from a national level, feed information really quickly back down to a local level and disseminate information across local authorities across the whole of the Midlands really, really rapidly through the team setup that we've currently got. To give you a flavour of some of the projects we're working on, um, interestingly when I did the analysis initially about uh, six to eight months into the role, uh, the key projects uh, that were being flagged in our long list of projects uh, was EV and district heating, um, predominantly because that's where um, the funding was. Our current project mix is a little bit different, but that reflects the fact that we as a team are here to support projects that there isn't the capacity in LEPs and local authorities to deliver. So we're actually, in many cases, dealing with those ones that people um, don't have the time or the resource to do. But in total, across the Midlands, we're talking a project pipeline of approximately 400 million and we're not even scratching the surface. So it shows there's a huge amount of potential and a huge amount of work um, to do. So just to give you a flavour of one or two projects that the Hub are working on, um, we've got the D2 grids, which is mine water uh, feasibility study. Um, so the Hub are funding some consultancy work in this, and it's happening over in Nottingham. And that's to identify whether or not it's feasible to use um, warm water in mines um, with heat pumps to then heat homes. So we're trialling this, um, sorry, doing the feasibility on about 20, 25 homes in Nottingham to see whether or not it's feasible to, to actually implement. Um, we're also linked up to the North East Hub and the North East LEP, who are um, managing a steering group around this, getting everybody who's working on this technology together across local authorities and LEPs so that we're all knowledge sharing and making sure that we're pulling in the same direction and not repeating the same mistakes or spending money on the same thing again and again. Um, so it's really, really important, uh, this project, and it's got a huge amount of potential. Uh, low carbon new build, um, so we're looking at supporting a project um, over Lincolnshire Way where they want to fully future proof homes for tenants um, and that's essentially building to passive house standard. Uh, so we're looking to see what we can do to support those and help them with the business cases and the energy modelling behind that. Um, we've got a number of solar farms, the one uh, I've referenced there on the board, uh, we're looking at whether or not we can utilise an old landfill site and uh, there's a convenient uh, hospital nearby that hopefully we can use um, and send the power to as well who are interested in doing that. So again, public sector supporting public sector in that respect. And of course, the main point of today, EV charging provision. Uh, so there are a whole host of EV projects across the piece that the team are helping to support. Um, some are focusing on EV uh, taxis, some are focusing specifically on the actual infrastructure itself. Um, but it's a huge growth area and there's a, it's probably the uh, largest number of projects in our pipeline at the moment. We've also um, been given a bolt on to the hub, which is the Royal Community Energy Fund. So Bayes have given us a further 1.8 million to support rural communities. Um, and these grants are available in two parts. There's stage one, which is 40,000 for feasibility, and stage two, which is up to 100,000 for business case and planning. Now, we've just awarded um, the uh, three projects on this. And interestingly, one of them, um, is looking at putting in a wind turbine battery storage and EV charge points to power electric buses that will serve the community. So straight away, uh, we've got a community here looking to see what they can do to generate power and also power uh, their transport that's going to serve a real community purpose. Because we know um, transport in rural communities is a really, really big issue for them. So it's available uh, to communities in England um, where there are a population of less than 10,000 and we do have a little map so when uh, applications come in we can check on the map and just confirm that people are eligible. Um, but it's really, really growing in popularity. We only had seven applications in the first round but for the next round we are actually already looking at about 15, 20 applicants. So it's really, really starting to grow and it's quite an exciting area. 
So I'm just going to give you um, a highlight of the few things that are happening over in Nottingham because um, one of my responsibilities is looking after the D2 N2 LEP area. Uh, and again, what's important about this is saying, well, we're all doing exciting things across the piece. What can we learn from each other? Um, Nottingham's particular ambition is to be carbon neutral by 2028, uh, which is really, really ambitious. Uh, but so far, we've already hit 41% reduction in CO2 emissions since 2005. So we've beat the 26%, uh, which was our original target for that. Um, if we allow for the population to increase, um, we've reduced per person emissions almost by 50%, which is absolutely fantastic, a real, real positive start. Um, but again, bringing it back to that transport, uh, transport piece and to, to put it into that perspective, um, our current emissions uh, as of 2017 um, were enough or the equivalent of six billion miles driven by the average new car in the UK. So that just hopefully puts it into some sort of perspective for you. Um, and in terms of the split, interestingly, for the city, it's relatively even split between um, transport, business and domestic sources. One more minute, Michael. <coughs> okay. I will flip through that one. We're working on a um, really exciting project for vehicle to grid. Um, where we're looking at the fleet come in at about four o'clock um, and then that's where there's a surge on the grid so actually we've got the cars there we can sell that power to the grid and then charge them up cheaper overnight we're also putting in battery storage and about 88 kilowatts of PV so that whole mix is really really exciting but what's really important is we need to collaborate and energy doesn't respect local authority boundaries and that is absolutely key so we need public and private support, so we need everybody to take ownership of challenges. And that internal element applies to businesses as well as local authorities. Businesses often have fleets um, that they can manage, they've got their estates that they can decarbonise, as do local authorities, and it has a knock-on effect then to area-based challenges as well. So it's looking together to see what we can do together. So the model I've got there is, uh, in each area, the districts, boroughs, cities and councils can work together uh, put together clear action plans that link into their energy strategies and then from there um, they can identify where the connections are that they can work together, collaborate and then on the bigger picture piece they can identify where they can invest jointly on large infrastructure works and there's no reason why this can't work for businesses. You just have to replace businesses, put supply chains in and suddenly that model works or could potentially work in the private sector as well. So. I'll hop over that because I thought I had about 20, 25 minutes on the thing. So um, uh, on the transport thing, I'll take the risk approach for this. What's important is can we actually just stop driving? You know, who can we stop? So lift sharing, car clubs, um, active travel again is really, really good, and park and ride. So what can we do to reduce cars on the road first and foremost? And then we can look at what sort of infrastructure do we need to put in place and encouraging the uptake of EV vehicles. Um, I'm sure most of that will be covered by other people. Um, so a few things we've done for local authorities in partnership with others. Nottingham City Council have worked on the scatter tool, um, which is about uh, local authorities being able to set um, their carbon emissions and trajectories. Um, so it's there for all local authorities to use and it's free for them to use. Um, so it's really good if all local authorities do it, they're all working from the same hymn sheet, so to speak. Um, and there's the link, so if these are circulated. Uh, then you can have a look at that link yourself. And then the Midlands Energy Hub have recently published a document on joint venture, so public-private partnership, um, which again is going to be really important in the future of energy projects for local authorities that need to work with the private sector to make things happen. So again, I'll be happy to um, send this over to the event organisers and that document can be circulated for everybody as well. So, apologies that last bit was a bit rushed, but hopefully um, anything I've missed you can catch up on the slides afterwards. Thank you.